Is the new DeWalt 20 volt atomic something you need? Let's find out. This is the brand new DCD 794 and it's their newest atomic 20 volt brushless drill driver. Now this is said to be their shortest drill yet and we'll actually find that out in just one moment. But is it something you need or is it just kind of another also run? Is it the most powerful? No, they're not claiming it is. It's also not a hammer drill, but let's dig in and check out all the features and then we'll also use this and then come back and talk about pricing warranty and what we thought of it. This is the brand new DeWalt DCD 794. It's part of their Atomic 20 volt series and it's supposed to be their shortest 20 volt drill yet uh, so very compact drill uh, it is a compact drill driver it is not a hammer drill driver so we only have uh, basically drilling and driving mode uh, we have a 15 position clutch actually 16 position because we also have a drill lock out there so adjusting this clutch obviously pretty typical um, so grab the clutch ring and turn it to any of the 15 positions or in the 16th position, which is the drill lockout that's going to lock out that clutch. We also get a ratcheting half inch chuck, so we can put up to a half inch shank in there, and then it is going to ratchet closed. We'll show that here in just a few moments. One thing I really like about this drill is the fact that there's no additional buttons. All we have is a, a two speed switch here, so we get a two speed transmission, if you will, so low and high speed, and that's really uh, the only switch or button that we have on this tool, otherwise just the trigger there. Now in low speed, we're going to get uh, up to 450 RPM, and then in high speed, we're going to get up to 1650 RPM. So quite a bit slower than, say, your uh, XR top of the line, you know, 2000 RPM, 2000 plus RPM drill, but still uh, plenty of RPM to get work done. And as I mentioned, regardless of which speed you have it in, you can still use that variable speed trigger to dial in the exact amount of power or output or speed that you want out of the tool. And then we have an LED light here at the base that's shining up towards wherever you're, uh, you're working on. Now again, key here is the compactness of this atomic uh, drill. And just to give you an idea, we'll get the width first, which is probably not all that compact. Uh, 2.4 inches across the back. Uh, but when we look at the length of this drill from tip to tail, if you will, you get 5.89 inches. So from front to back of the tool, less than six inches long. And we have this power stack battery on here. So it is a smaller battery. Uh, you're looking at j right at just over nine inches, almost nine and a quarter inches tall with the power stack on there. Obviously a taller battery is gonna give you a, a taller tool. And then looking at weight, with that power stack battery, three pounds, two ounces, three pounds, one and a half ounces. So just over three pounds and without a battery, yet not even two and a half pounds. So two pounds, six and a half ounces with the tool alone. Now, when you're looking for a compact tool, like a drill or an impact driver like this, that's where I love this small power stack battery because it fits that so well, such a small footprint. Uh, again, if you're looking for compactness, then why have a huge battery hanging off the end? If this is going to get the job done for you, then it's a great fit. Now let's take this over and see what we can do as far as performance. All right, so let's first talk about the power output of the Atomic DCD 794, and that is DeWalt claims a 404 UWO or unit watts out. Now that's equivalent to like a ton of something. Who knows uh, what that equates to, but we don't have a pound feed or a torque rating, but still, uh, I think the drill will probably do the trick. Let's start off by throwing a, we'll throw a Phillips bit in here and you hear the ratcheting chuck. So you can hear the ratcheting. Locks that down. Put that bit where we need it. And we'll start in high. 
And let's start with the world's favorite construction fastener, the uh, drywall screw. I mean, that's good for everything, right? So I've got it locked out in drill mode. Let's, let's roll that down. We have this in drill mode. Let's, uh, let's roll this down to, I don't know, let's start, it, let's start at five and see what we get there as far as how deep we sink this. And again, we're in high speed. Get it started. Okay, not very much on that number five rating there. Let's crank that up to, let's say nine. Back it back out. Get another run at it. Okay, so we're getting there. And let's try 13. Uh, I'm sorry, that's 12. So it looks like in 12 we're starting to sink this, I don't know, what is this, a two and a half inch drywall screw, maybe a two inch screw. Yeah, it's probably a two inch drywall screw. Start a new hole. Okay, so it looks like in 13 we're almost have that two inch drywall screw flush in a piece of pressure treated two by. Try that one more time. Okay, let's lock it, let's put it on 15. So yeah, it looks like you're gonna have to lock this thing out into drill mode to be able to really sink this screw. So yeah, basically you're gonna overpower the actual Phillips bit. Gonna go to our T25 and we'll go to a three inch construction fastener here. Yeah, so there we're actually driving it below surface. Let's see if a more efficient screw Gonna back that off to 14 and a better fastening screw here. Yeah, so again, back back down to 14 and we're back to uh, kind of a flush. So again, driving this below surface is gonna take you locking that out into drill mode. And now I'm gonna go to a four inch or three and a half inch fastener. So the power to sink that is, is no problem for the Atomic, even in high. We're still in high speed. We didn't even have to shift to low uh, for those three and a half, four inch fasteners, deck screws, whatever you want to call them. However, you can't use the clutch settings as far as being able to, you know, uh, set your certain depth as far as countersinking the screws or, you know, uh, driving deck boards, things like that. You're going to have to use that drill mode and then use that finger to actually use your throttle. Unless, let's switch over to low and see if that changes things. We'll back that down to, we'll back it down to 13. Nope, still 13 is not gonna put it below deck even in low. So again, power absolutely fine. Uh, but the clutch settings, you're not going to be able to drive big, heavy, you know, three and a half inch, four inch deck screws, uh, any type of construction faster uh, with the clutch settings. Again, you can, you can use the power to drive them, but it's not going to be able to help you in sinking those heads below deck. Smaller screws, absolutely. Drywall screws, things like that, going to work fine for doing that. And I don't know that I'd count that as a negative. Just letting you know that using that clutch, if that's what you're wanting to do, probably not going to work out in driving these larger stuff. Now, you know, if you're driving uh, self-tapping screws into sheet metal, gal roofing, something like that, absolutely, that clutch is going to work out just fine for you. Now, this is some thinner gauge. I think it's like 11 gauge, not quite an eighth inch, uh, one by one steel tubing. I'm going to drive some self-tappers in here, start with these little ones here. And by the way, I've got it back down to uh, number eight on our clutch setting and still high speed. That's perfect for that. We're not overdriving that fastener. It's driving it, setting it flush, and then uh, engaging that clutch. Now 
another shorty. So maybe another tick or two on the uh, clutch setting, but we're not driving the heads off of those screws or you know ruining our ruining our uh, roofing or whatever we're using that on. So perfect idea for something like that. Something else pretty typical of this is going to be drilling in wood. Obviously, uh, one of the most common is two by material. We'll use our two by six pressure treated material here, and I believe I've got a one inch. Oh, it's a three quarter inch uh, Dewalt self feeding auger bit. Uh, we're going to leave in high. We will put that into drill mode. So in high, three quarter inch self feed auger. Okay, in high doesn't like that. That 404 UWOs just can't, walk, can't quite make it happen. Shift into low, I'm sure we won't have any problem there whatsoever. Yeah. And you know, most of the time, on these self-feed auger bits, it's not that it doesn't have the power to turn it, it's that it doesn't have the power to drive that screw at the rate that it's pulling that bit in and to cut as fast as it wants to cut. If it didn't have that self feed and you were feeding it, you could probably drill through it in high just fine. But again, as hard as it pulls that in, that's what's doing doing it because I'm not putting any force on it whatsoever. But in high, I'm just going to brace here so it doesn't yank on my wrist. There it is. See. No forward thrust at all. That's all because of, again, that self-feed bit on the top there that's actually pulling that bit in at that certain rate is what it can't handle. But in low, again. No problem there. We'll go to a typical uh, 1 and 8 inch self-feeding spade bit. We'll shift back to high. Again, same thing. You see, I'm not, I'm not putting any force forward, but it's just that self-feed auger that's making that happen. Shift to low. Got to be careful on a drill that doesn't have an auxiliary handle. That's my own stupid mistake. And now we've got some steel back up here. This is a little thicker than uh, eighth inch steel. Very run of the mill uh, titanium coated drill bits. So nothing special, but they should be decent drill bits. And again, in high. So there should not be any issue in drilling steel. You can go up to a larger quarter inch bit. So no problem. Step bit. So you're drilling holes in firewall, drilling holes in tubing, whatever it may be, even step bits. Shouldn't have an issue. By the way, I'm partial throttle on that, just kind of throttling it down. So no problem at all driving a step bit. Perfect tool for automotive stuff. This would be a great tool for unless you're getting into 
big truck stuff, but needing to drill holes in firewalls and cages and uh, you know different fabricated things, then this is a great tool for that. Now I said this before, but I really like this tool with the PowerStack battery because it's meant to be a compact drill, and that's exactly what it is, and that smaller footprint with that PowerStack battery is absolutely perfect. Now, you could obviously put this with a five amp hour battery and it's gonna do absolutely well, but you can just see that we have a bigger footprint now. It's a taller tool as well. And then if you wanna to go to a more low profile, three or four amp hour kind of flat pack, but with the 21700 cells, you could do that as well. But again, my thoughts on this, we're trying to stay compact. We still have plenty of power with that power stack battery. Now, is this gonna replace your XR series, top of the heap, you know, uh, drill driver from DeWalt? No, it's not meant to either. This is part of their atomic series, meant to be compact, also meant to have decent power, which it does. I think this is perfect for drilling, you know, one inch holes and smaller. Yes, you may need to shift down into low speed, but that's nothing new. Uh, are you gonna drive a two and nine sixteenths inch big bore bit? No, again, it's not meant to do that. Bare tool, you're looking at $139. Now the cool thing is you can find this tool with a two amp hour battery on Acme Tools and the charger for just 159 bucks. So $20 more, you're getting a battery and a charger versus just the bare tool. Also warranty on this is going to be a three year warranty. Now if you want the power stack battery, you may pay a little more for that. You will pay a little more for that. So check this thing out. We think this is a great compact drill for those small projects less than three pounds or right at three pounds to carry around so it's hard to beat that so check us out on instagram facebook twitter and even TikTok. and if you don't mind would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already and by all means did you hate our video well then give us a thumbs down but would you let us know in the comments why have a great day and keep smiling